and we're back with some more oxygen not included and today we're gonna start with this planet it is covered in far too much stuff and a whole bunch of it needs to well it needs to go the place is looking far far cleaner after all of that now I just want to sweep up all the polluted dirt and get it out of the way namely because it's off gassing and we'd like to maybe reduce the amount of gases in the area and there's loads of carbon dioxide down there, but the polluted oxygen, I, I think we can get rid of most of that. So much better. Also, it's now pretty much uniformly carbon dioxide, except for a little bit of polluted oxygen down here. Where, where are you? Oh, damn it. We can get rid of that. But that should be the last of the polluted oxygen producers, and that'll leave us with just carbon dioxide around here, which is, well, just easier to deal with. All right, now we need to put together a base. I'm thinking, yeah, under here we stick in the bedrooms. And then we sort of use this as the central ladder, put a fire pole beside it, and maybe leave space for possibly transport tubes later. Yeah, right about here. But again, eight beds of this type was just kind of awkward, given room sizes and the requirements, so there we go. We put in nine beds, both of them are bedrooms, and down bedroom, and... Hey, but why are you in a bedroom? Okay, it's got to seal up the back end, but once that's done, we'll have our bedrooms in place. Then I'm thinking right across the way we'll have the dining hall. So we'll put the dining hall here, bathroom below it. Maybe kitchen on top or kitchen below that? Kitchen probably on top. That there looks like a very, very standard lunch hall. It is 32 tiles inside, or 33 tiles in size. Uh, bathroom is 24. And we've even got a little water sieve in here at the back. I think what I'm going to do for automation wise is we're just going to stick in an auto sieve back here. Uh, in fact, can we make it a copper? We have loads of copper with us, you know what? Let's do that, even though it's going to incinerate the local area. It'll at least be mildly fun. That should be able to reach there, which means we can just stick a storage bin or two right there. So uh, you can use the sand, gets fed to the auto sweeper, auto sweeper feeds into the water sieve, and then we'll get the polluted dirt out somehow. Hmm. Oh, actually, yeah, that's going to be trickier than I thought. Eh, we'll figure something out in a bit. The, to get the blue dirt out, we're going to need uh, an auto loader, but I think we can stick that inside the room here. Beautiful as that is, we do need to make a minor change here. Uh, this dupe is going to relax. And um, by relaxing, I mean they're going over to the mini pod to hang around, which is kind of pointless. Let's make them a quick recreation room here so they have somewhere slightly closer by to hang out while they're in their downtime. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even have to be that fancy. That seemed pretty easy. Now they should have somewhere to hang out in their downtime. Uh, yep. That's a recreation room. Perfect. They'll stop wandering all the way over to either side. In fact, we'll open the door there just to cut down on transport time. Or, well, movement time. Now, kitchen. I'm thinking we're going to chop, put a kitchen right on top here. Uh, about three tiles high? Yeah, should we? Oh, actually, wait, no. When it comes to food, on this planet, we've got to make burgers. So we're going to need to put in one of these. They're at least three tiles high. We'll need to put a... We're going to need four tiles high here to do this right if we want to fit in the auto supers and all that. Let me think for a second. This little design is going to be very similar to one we've done previously. Probably this one here. We're going to have one auto sweeper that can pull all of the stored food and dump them into the cooking machines. And then another auto sweeper whose job it is to put that food away. And, and if we're also going to store the food in this sort of cold area here so that it's going to be so frozen it can't ever go off and we can store the food forever. I mean, we're making frost burgers. We don't want to mess this up. We want these frost burgers to be stored forever if possible. Well, actually, how good would a deep frozen frost burger taste? I mean, they really need to introduce a microwave, maybe? I, I don't know. Originally, I was just going to leave the carbon dioxide in there. If we look at gases, there's already carbon dioxide in this area, and that's uh, considered sterile for food storage. But I think we're going to have to switch to hydrogen. My plans for cooling are going to be cold enough to liquefy most things, so let's just use some hydrogen to be safe. It's one of the few gases you can use that's sterile and is almost impossible to to liquefy. Well, not impossible, it's just uh, very difficult. The only hydrogen we've got left in this mouth though is over here, and I'd rather not have to send in more. And that's, yeah, that's all the hydrogen we got left. All right then, let me figure out how I'm gonna get the hydrogen out of there safely and into there. That could be interesting. The plan here is tight Titanically stupid. Uh, in fact, I don't even think we're going to bother with a liquid lock. What we're going to do is we're going to rem delete those tiles and uh, the gas pump is going to start pumping. And when it does, it should start sucking up that hydrogen, at which point it will get sent through this gas filter. This gas filter will filter out the hydrogen and send it down this gas pipe just to this bridge. There's no pipe on the end of this, so it should just all collect there. And then when we deconstruct that section, we should be able to capture the hydrogen. 
if we've done it right. Yeah, there we go, we've already grabbed it already. And hydrogen will get filtered out, everything else will get dumped up to the top of the map. And how much hydrogen did we get? 5.2 grams. Well, that's, um, it's great. Great, whatever, that's all we needed. I was going to liquid lock it in, but then I realized that we're, the amounts we were dealing with were so pathetically tiny, it would make absolutely no difference. Now all we do is delete that tile there. And that should be the end. In fact, let's just sever that. Uh, delete that and the bridge. And that should give us exactly what we need. Oh, you know what? Delete them all. We don't need any of that. And if we've done this right, the hydrogen gas will just float there. A little bit might escape. Oh, actually, wait, no. Uh, we're going to need to put in a thermium tile just below it. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of hydrogen there, but that's fine. Now, if someone would prioritize that, actually, we're going to use the emergency priority. I've, I I dislike using this because it takes people off their sleep schedule sometimes, but we, we need that done quickly. And one, two, three, four. There we go. How much hydrogen do we get to keep? 60 grams, maybe? And let's see, Ooh, a little bit escaped at the bottom, but we've got 61 grams up there, now 125, it compressed it up, that's perfect. The more we got in there, the better, put an insulated tile on the bottom, and we're done. Perfect. Then we can just uh, get rid of all of this, we don't need any of you. Uh, you know what, we've got the power, we can let that gas pump go for a little bit longer. What's it doing? Well, it's vacuumed out most of the area, what's that? That is a natural gas, and that's next activity, 7.6 cycles. I think we can vacuum this out, then we'll seal it up and be done with it. The next step in any base, after you've taken care of sleeping and... Oh, are people actually using those beds? No, they're unassigned. Good. Why have they changed colour? You know what? Doesn't matter. So long as they're all sleeping in their little beds in here, are they? Yeah, that better be Millington. Good job, Millington. You've still got your little nightlight on and everything. Uh, perfect. Uh, down here, yes, we need to put in the atmosphere docks and we are going with radiation. Now, we have to run eight duplicates off one kilo of methane, so we're going to have to get really, really creative here. Um, hmm. But I definitely think lead suits are the way to go in this particular scenario. Uh, before we start going much further, I think it's time we pressurize this map a bit. For now, we have been letting all of the carbon dioxide just escape into... Well, we got all the polluted oxygen escape into the background of space. Now we've been letting all the carbon dioxide go. I think it's time we stopped that. In fact, yeah, we're going to turn you off and deconstruct you while we're at it. The plan here is we're going to have a lot of carbon dioxide in the, produced in this base, so let's just start sealing this area in. Right now, the whole top has been covered by a whole bunch of these just to reduce the radiation, but not so much that it didn't kill the germs. For example, all of the slime lung, dead. Every single last germ... Oh, almost every single last germ. How are you still alive? Fine, we will leave you still open to radiation. Oh, that was the last batch that went in. But you can see it's slowly decreasing, namely because of exposure to 12 rads. Uh, maybe we should get rid of some of that polluted water. That would probably help. Hmm. How do we get the polluted water out of there without it off-gassing? You know what? We'll worry about that after we pressurize this place to more than 2 kilos of carbon dioxide pressure. We're producing plenty of this stuff, so it should be fairly easy to manufacture. Uh, just give me a moment while we wall this all in. Done. We have walled in the top to stop all the gases escaping, and we've got a liquid lock there, a double liquid lock there, and another single little liquid bead lock right over there. More NAPTA to the rescue for all of those ones. Uh, it seems to be keeping all the gases in. Well, okay, there was a few milligrams over here, but as you can see on the other side, it's 300 grams, and the pressure is rising. We are dumping all of the carbon dioxide from our natural gas generators in there. It'll slowly but steadily raise the pressure. It's, it's going to take us a while to build this stuff up. I'm thinking, ooh, next up we're going to need to put in the arbor tree section. We're going to need to start growing a lot of trees, like an awful lot of trees. I think it was 13 I worked the mats out at. Mm. Let me start putting in a, a little orchard, I suppose you'd call it. This is just the bare bones start. We're going to take the polluted water, feed it to the trees. The trees are going to produce wood. The wood we're going to put into the ethanol distilleries, which will then produce... Well, carbon dioxide, polluted dirt, and ethanol. And the ethanol will feed back in here to get more power and some polluted water. It, 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 we end up with less polluted water than we put in, but we're not actually doing it for the polluted water. Then we put that polluted water we've just made, and we put that back into more trees. So we should be able to run the 13 trees we're intending on running, and... Yeah, that hydroponic... Wait, can we... Oh, for a second there, I thought I could overwrite hydroponic farm tiles with another tile. That would have been really convenient. But um, we're only going to need... 13 of these, so the 17 was just to keep it all symmetrical. And that's why we've only got this many ethanol distilleries. We should only need seven ethanol distilleries to hit our targets. 
Now, once this is done, we're going to need to put together a couple of critter ranches. Now, the reason for the critter ranches is they can allow us to produce things that we couldn't normally build. For example, we can put in a sage hatch here and they'll be able to consume the polluted dirt we get out of this and turn it into coal. We couldn't get coal any other way. Well, assuming we're living off entirely just one kilo of methane. So the methane gets turned into natural gas, natural gas produces polluted water, polluted water gets consumed by the trees, the trees get turned into ethanol, the ethanol produces polluted dirt, the polluted dirt gets eaten by the sage hatch, the sage hatch turns it into coal. See, all coming from, from a coup, so we're still pretty safe. Transitive property stuff and all that. But we're also going to need sand, so yeah, we're going to have to build a second one of these. Not only that, we don't need big ones. For example, we don't need an awful lot of coal for what we have got, or planned. And more on that later. And we don't need a lot of sand. We need enough sand to actually just run the filtration medium for the water sieve for our sink. So we just need one poke shell and one sage hatch, and that's it. I know it's been a patch recently, so sage hatches now are actually... They only consume half as much, but we really do not need a lot of sand. And I think we can extend that up a little bit here. Easy peasy little setup. These things are tiny. The critters only need 12 tiles and we've got 16, so you know, we're going to find it quite roomy. Now we only need one critter in here, which means this auto sweeper can fill up that incubator when the time comes. Excess eggs will dump outside the room, probably be using a, well, where is it, a conveyor loader. In fact, when it comes to conveyor loaders, you might just stick them in there. I haven't decided where we're going to put the evolution chamber just yet, but uh, we'll worry about that later. For now, we'll just finish this off. We're trying to figure out where everything is before we wire it all up. Now, with that done, that gets us two of the critters we need, but we also need slicksters. And I've been trying to look around for somewhere to put them, and the problem is, well, there's a volcano over here we're going to want to tame at some point. Plus, I want to put my industrial brick down here. Actually, industrial brick might be a good idea. And we're not going to go with the steam one. It was pointed out to me we've already done a steam sauna over here, uh, so no, no point. We've also done a steam sauna on irony. Well, this place is going to eventually start boil boiling after a while. Uh, this place is actually pretty hot. At some points I found steam in here, probably from this one or this one flashing some stuff to steam. But with both of those already being pretty much steam rooms, I thought we'd just go with a regular one. Nothing too crazy, to be honest, because this colony is going to be pretty insane as it is. We're going to have to run eight duplicates off a kilo of methane, so... Uh, uh, yeah, give me a minute. We'll stick in just a regular smelting setup down here. Probably five steam turbines? Yeah, five steam turbines is fine. I was just watching this being produced, and I went up here to look at something, and then I noticed this. This seems unusual. Um, I think some ice melted. And when I say some ice melted, I mean a lot. A lot of ice melted. Uh, we're going to change all of you to holding meltable stuff. Uh, we need to get all the ice out of that area. Fluted ice? Yes. Snow, brine ice, carbon... Yeah, sure, crushed ice. Oh, yeah, all the ices. Just, just take them all and put them down there. Of course, they won't do that until all the construction is finished, but that's fine. It's fine, we'll just have to mop up the mess. This is going to be an ungodly mess. Um, and I don't want that getting in there. You know what? Emergency priority, people. Get a couple of plastic tiles in there. And hopefully stop that water from flooding this whole area to the point where we're going to have to make major renovations. And oh wow, we're already at... <sighs> oh well. I would like to thank the duplicants for their prompt and efficient response times, which has resulted in far less catastrophe. Well, not quite. Jesus. This is an absolute... I hope I don't have to put in a liquid pump there to get rid of that. I probably will, though. Uh, where'd the rest of it go? Down here? Yeah, that's fine. How, what's the temperature on that stuff? Yeah, 70 degrees. That's just something melted. Oh, well. It happens. On the right side, it spread out a bunch of chill. And this place was kind of toasty to start with. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Well, our mopping was unsuccessful. But I have an alternative strategy that should result in a win, I'm thinking. It'll, it'll result in more mopping as well, but I'm okay with that. Uh, you guys can cancel that. Y you're not going to be able to do anything until you get rid of the source of the problem, which is this stuff up here. And... yeah. Bye-bye now. Don't come back, you hear? Okay, that will roll down there, a little bit off there. We're gonna, just, just give me a minute to clean up the mess and we'll be right back to this industrial brick. Industrial bricks are easy-peasy. The general consensus, one, two, three, four... Damn it, I... Fine, don't do that. We're going to need five steam turbines. Those five seed turbines we're going to use to delete a bunch of heat. Uh, oh, and you know what? We'll, we'll wall that in like that. We're going to need to bring our duplicates in from this side anyway, once they're in their Atmos suits. So, yeah, something like that. This room in here is where all the heat deletion is going to go on. So we're going to have a bunch of refineries below this. In fact, very similar to this one. In fact, I think this one is a retrofit. <laughs> 
keep remembering how long ago it was. It was about a thousand plus cycles ago where we made this one. But uh, this one was much smaller and more compact at the time. So this will send up uh, the heated coolant. It'll go up around here, cool down and come back down again. So we're going to use the same process over here. We're just going to make it slightly neater. Well, hopefully make it neater. These things are, well, they're pretty straightforward at this point. You grab a liquid bridge. We're going to stick this in here. This is going to be our cooling solution for the whole system. We're going to go with ceramic because we brought like 40 tons of the stuff with us. And then we're going to have that feed into the input there. And then the output's going to feed into that output. And we'll make that in there. And this is going to go up like that. That's how the coolant's going to flow through it. So if it's on or off, the coolant will still keep flowing. We should probably... Oh, actually, I don't even think we're going to bother with a liquid tank. Uh, we could maybe squeeze in a liquid tank on the end here. Hmm. You know what? I'll cover that in a minute. But next up, we're also going to need to put in the plumbing. And what's going on here is we're going to use thermium and we're going to use this to cool it. Well, it's going to be running on our refineries. In fact, I'll stick one together real quick and show you. That's what it's going to look like. One metal refinery here. It feeds up into that. And then the, the liquids flow around, cooling down into what's this going to be this giant steam room. Same plan as before. Now, one moment while we just finish this off. While waiting for this to finish, there's been a printing pod activation. And we've got one of the new duplicates that came with the newest update, Steve. Uh, still not worth taking the tidying, building, and doctoring. Now, we, we don't actually need them, but it's just nice to see the new duplicates. I believe there's four of them. There's Steve and three others. Uh, this Steve is convinced that he has psychic powers, and he knows exactly what his friends think about that. That sounds about right. Uh, we will... Uh, oh, oh, no, no, no. Print the copper. We'll take the copper, and we'll find a use for it. And where was I? Ah, yes, finishing this off. And then I think we'll probably need a second floor down here just to handle the rest of the industry. I decided to make the entire platform out of iron. It just seemed more appropriate. Plus, it'll help spread around the chill when we start running the coolant through it. Right now, we haven't actually run most of the piping, wiring, all that stuff. You'll notice it were pretty bare on most of that. There's only a few bits and pieces we've wired up. Namely because we don't know where everything's going just yet. We're trying to make a rather large base from scratch with uh, a lot of stringent requirements. I was thinking for the... we need three ranches here. Well, we need 16 slicksters if you want to keep up with certain numbers. Now, I know I haven't gone over the numbers yet, but honestly, until this is finished, it's like a, I had to use a notepad to figure all this out and a calculator. So I think we're going to have to wait until it's done before I can explain fully the stupidity of what we're doing. But in the meantime, what we can do is we can make a roadway across here. I'm using plastic for everywhere because... I never really used plastic much before, and people were asking me why I didn't. Normally I just don't because it doesn't conduct heat very well. Its thermal conductivity is terrible. So if you run pipes through it, it doesn't really give you much cooling or heating or anything like that. So normally why I tend to avoid it and just prefer to stick it with other types of uh, tile. These ones, though, they do give a 50% run speed bonus, and normal tiles only give a run speed bonus of 25%. So there is some use to them. It's just uh, I'm usually not that bothered. Actually, you know what? We'll go with plastic down here as well. This... We're going to run over here, and we're going to build our stick to ranches in this section because we have a nice open area. Just it's kind of cramped over here, down here, over here, uh, over here, over here, here, here. So this kind of narrows down the sections we can build one in. This is what I'm thinking. Three ranches, and I I was originally going to make them miniature size because we only need 16 slicks as well. 16 stickers plus two to kind of even out the numbers. I want to make sure we have a little bit more than we need to hit the hit the quantity we're going for. Just we want to re we need the meat for the burgers, and since we need to run 16 stickers, I thought we'd run 18. Uh, so six, 12, 18, six in each one of these ranches. I was going to make them only fit for holding six, but instead I just max them out at the normal size where you're going to run up to eight. Just in case we need to change in the future, and it's not like we were going to use these last few tiles over here for anything much. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll use those and see what happens. While this gets built, I just checked up on our slime and all the slime lung germs are finally gone. That last one was actually a little tricky, so all we did was uh, we increased the amount of rads they were exposed to quite significantly and it quickly took care of the problem. Now we have oh, all the slime cleaned, we can start getting that out of there. And I think, yeah, this will be done in a minute. We look to have run into a problem. Leonard over here has unpermitted food. Uh, somehow they've ran out of meat. This is the first time that's happened. They've got plenty of berry sludge. We kept them as a backup, so we can tide them over with that, but that's not good. We have six critters here. How did this happen? We have changed their permissions so they can now consume berry sludge, which is good because they're down to about 260 calories, which is bad. Come on. I know it's an awkward slog, but you can do it. Grab some food. Perfect. Now, there's actually two eggs that are about to hatch. Where have we got them? 60, 75, a 93 and a 94. 
they should hatch actually shortly and provide them with the necessary food so we can take them off the berry sledge again. Oh, but that's... Hmm. It's concerning. Okay, we've upped it to seven critters. That should help even it out. And maybe we should purge some of the food from here. Eh, for example, that Jureko can go. And uh, nope, nope, nope. We even have some wild food here for... Yep, you can go. There's also some pips that can go after that as well. And how are you feeling, buddy? Much better. Calories going up. Nice. And let's see how everyone's doing back home on uh, forging in progress. No, not quite done yet. We are going to need some sort of incubation chamber for all of these, so we're going to have all the eggs swept up by these auto sweepers and jumped into this evolution chamber. And then we'll put a little bit of an auto sweeper above it right about. Ooh, we can't hit all of them. Tell you what, we will put one auto sweeper right there, one auto sweeper right there, and that means those incubators will get filled up with eggs as necessary. And one incubator can support about four sticksters constantly, so four, eight, twelve, sixteen, probably a little bit more because some of the eggs they'll be put in will already have some incubation on them. We're not even going to power them. We're just going to use unpowered incubators to do all of this. And then once the, the slickster hatches inside there, a duplicate can come along, pick them up, and drop them off with these critter drop-offs. We are going to make you molten larvae and slicksters. Uh, no, actually, we only need six in each one of these. Six, twelve, and eighteen, and done. And we just got to wait till the last of the construction is complete. That thing's just about finished. We still have to put in a few bits and bobs like power, but that's going to have to wait until we get another few pieces in place. When the time comes to make this fully operational, we'll wall that up there, and then we'll delete that plastic block, and we'll have a, a blob of liquid there and there to make ourselves a vac seal, so that none of the heat from in here can escape. This place is going to be about 80 degrees to keep all the slicksters nice and happy, but we'll leave that for a little bit. We're probably going to want, we're going to want to come back in here before we turn the whole thing on. Uh, it's the same reason we haven't actually walled up this side here either. And I'm thinking the next ranch we want to put in is we want to put down. Well, the thing is. I want to put down our crops, and for our crops, we're actually going to be sending over one of our exuberant seeds. Where is it? We're going to be sending over an exuberant sleep wheat seed. Um, actually, this is the Ani Assistant. It has a food calculator built in. Doesn't work for the newer stuff, but it does work for all of the base game things. So what we've got here is enough frost burgers to feed eight duplicates with ravaging hunger, assuming we're harvesting it all. I think it's going to take eight sleet wheat on normal to produce the necessary number of burgers. However, if we were to say take one of those sleet wheat and make sure it's an exuberant sleet wheat, we'd only need a quarter as many, so we'd only need two. And then if we were to take that exuberant sleet wheat and we were to feed it fertilizer, it'd only take one. And then if we say that would that would leave us though just borderline because we'd have to be perfect about harvesting it and picking it. But I thought, what if we then included say, oh, one of those sweetles and uh, what's the other one? No, oh, the the big bug that increases its growth speed by 50%, if you can include one of those, we would definitely have enough food running off one sleet wheat to generate the necessary number of burgers. Oh, and this is how much meat we're going to need, and that's how much water weed we're going to need. I'm thinking we're going to mutate, get a mutated water weed as well, but that could take a while. We're going to have to start with three normal water weeds and work our way up to an exuberant on that one. But to make that exuberant mutated sleet wheat grow, we're going to need to have phosphorite. And the reason we need the phosphorite is to feed the wheezworts, and the wheezworts will provide the rads that will allow the mutated sleet wheat to grow. So to get the phosphorite, we are going to need to get our hands on, well, second, we'll just put some tiles across. This here is where we're going to house our single Draco. Feeding on Bam Lily. One Bam Lily will keep the one Draco going. It'll run around in here, and every time it feeds off the Bam Lily, it'll generate 10 Phosphorite, which is enough to run two and a half Weezworts, and we're going to need to run two Weezworts. So, this should work out just fine. But, uh, no, I don't need a Critter Sensor or anything. Oh, how am I get the eggs out? And there we go. This ugly monstrosity is what we're going to use to ranch Drecos. Uh, so, Draco is in here. It feeds off this uh, Bam Lily. We need one of them, remember? It uh, outs its phosphorite every cycle, but any eggs that come along, we need one incubated, it'll get thrown in there. We'll be incubating more than we need, but they'll be trapped in there even when they mature. When you throw an egg in, it stays in there for 20 cycles, or I think it's, it actually might be more for those. And then after it hatches anyway, five cycles later, it turns into an adult and forces itself out. If you need it at the time and you, your critter in here dies off, you, you'll dupes will automatically come along, pick it up and move it in here. And that's how we get it restocked. Same over these sides. These will help restock these automatically. And any excess eggs, well, we'll have to grab some shipping, say, give me a conveyor loader right here. We'll put a conveyor loader there, and same for these, we'll put them outside. So this in here can reach that conveyor loader, and we'll have all the excess eggs uh, sent over to the evolution chamber. 
And done. That gives us all of the critters sorted, I think. Yeah, that's all the slicksters, poke shells, sage hatches, uh, drecos. That just leaves the food. Now, the food is going to be easier yet more complicated at the same time. I think I'm probably going to put it up here. I want the food as close as possible to the freezer, and at the same time, it just cuts down on travel distance. Um, we're going to need to put in two wheezewort run farms that are going to be relatively small, but one of them is going to have to need a cooling solution for the sleep wheat, and the other one's going to need to be about, oh, what, 25 degrees, I think, for the water wheat? I'll have to look that up to be sure. We're also going to need to put in our oxygen solution, which I think I'm going to stack right on top here. So oxygen solution here, farming here, though it will require me to do a whole bunch more testing. This uh, base is, to say the least, a little bit experimental with what we're doing, um, but it should theoretically support eight duplicates with frost burgers, full supply of oxygen, all off one kilo of methane. Probably. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.